body or so forth. On the ground, I was taught what to do if there was a catastrophic emergency. You'll hear it click. Let's say we're back at home, we're getting ready to land, or maybe it's right after takeoff or during taxi. For whatever reason, something happens, he'll say egress, egress, egress. Look down and grab that scramble handle, pull firmly back till it stops. Oh. Okay. Okay. Grab the survival kit handle, pull it off. In case there was an emergency up at altitude, I would have to bail out and then steer a parachute that would automatically open three miles above the Earth. I trained with the latest virtual reality technology, learning to avoid obstacles by descending through a computer-generated sky. The pressurized spacesuit I would wear is one of the same ones worn by the first shuttle astronauts. At altitude, without this suit, no one would survive. This is Sergeant Diekman. He's going to be fitting you for your helmet and your gloves and your suit. Once inside the helmet, U-2 pilots breathe 100% pure oxygen, highly flammable even here on the ground. For that reason, you must remove all hair and makeup products. The 32-pound suit is bulky and constricting. Every pilot has a team to dress them. Ooh, that's tight. There's a cooling system inside because heat is a serious threat. Sealed up, your core body temperature rises one degree every 10 minutes. Eventually, you could pass out. I feel like I'm wearing okay, my little sister's clothes. <laughs> Every part snaps together to create an airtight seal. Ensconced in this second skin, air is pumped into the suit to test and retest for any leaks. Technicians do this each time a pilot puts on the suit. Okay. I'm, I mean, I'm definitely feeling a little claustrophobic and all that, yeah. It's a very strange, strange feeling. Pure oxygen is pumped into my tight-fitting rubber mask. It's uncomfortable. I could also sense my heart rate rising rapidly as the team secured the last straps. We made our way to the altitude chamber. Behind this closed door, they create the atmospheric pressure pilots encounter at the edge of space. This exercise is considered the most demanding challenge that new pilots face before they fly in a U-2. Let's go ahead and start our ascent to 40,000, please, and beyond. How are your ears feeling? I just popped them. OK, good. For the next hour, they would put me in every emergency situation, testing my ability to function in this suit. How are you feeling so far? Can you breathe okay? It's feeling a little hard to breathe. A little hard to breathe? Let's check to make sure. My first insight into how dangerous this flight could be came when they took me to 63,000 feet, a height known as Armstrong's Line. At that point, there's almost no air pressure. They showed me what would happen if there was a leak in my suit. There you go. Oh, yeah, I see it. That would be your blood right now if you weren't in that suit. Finally, I reached 74,000 feet, the altitude at which I would be flying tomorrow. Movement was almost impossible. What we take for granted now required intense mental focus and physical effort. Okay, try to pull yourself forward if you can. Wow. <laughs> I don't know how I can. Can you at least reach down and grab the ejection handle? What am I hitting right here? That is your knee. That's my knee. That is your knee. Next, they tested my reaction to the unthinkable. Suddenly, the cockpit springs a leak. We lose all cabin pressure in less than a second in what's called a rapid decompression. Here we go. Don't hold your breath, and off we go. Keep breathing, and just go ahead and pull that down as hard as you can. OK, just keep working at it. How's that feel? Weird. Weird is correct. My suit expanded. I struggled to pull my helmet down and reorient myself. My hour in the altitude chamber was one of the longest hours of my life. As Colonel Buddha touched the nose of the plane for good luck, I made my final approach to the aircraft.
It takes more than 20 people to launch a U-2 into the air. Ours is a two-seater, one of only four in the world, used to train all U-2 pilots. 24 hours ago, the cockpit felt cramped. In my suit, it felt like there was no space at all. Finally, the canopy was locked down. Now Colonel Buddha and I would see if we were going to dance with the lady or wrestle with the dragon. Pinion 71, taxi with Lima. Pinion 71, taxi to runway 15. Pinion 71. Okay, now, here comes the OCAN. Watch out. Pinion 71, ready for takeoff. Pinion 71, build tower, Roger, hold short of runway 15, waiting on Harley. Pinion 71, hold it short. Aircraft is good, no leaks. All flight controls in their correct position. The aircraft is ready to go. We have clearance. Okay. Now look over Brandon and give a big thumbs up, okay? That's it. Here we go. Watch your knees. All right. We're going to start the power up. All right. He's off. Here we go. In less than a minute, at 6,000 feet, we broke through the clouds into brilliant sunshine and a cobalt blue sky. If you look outside right now and look up, move the sun visor. And, it's and so dark. Up. It is. It's, it's really, really dark. It's so beautiful. All right, now Mount uh, Shasta's off the... Uh, I saw it. It's right there over it there. Is, yeah. I see it peeking up over, out through the clouds. Our training mission would take us up to Eugene, Oregon, harder than it looks. No, I would have liked to have hit 70 or higher. Hey, look, I'm not an unhappy camper. We got up real high. It's unbelievable. It's such an experience. I know you do it all the time, but it's just an amazing experience. Okay, I got the gear down. The flaps are set. The speed brakes out. Get it to T. Eight, six, five, four, 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 three, two, Two, a little bit of left rudder. Two, one, one. Welcome home. Yahoo! Wow. We had flown to the edge of space, and thankfully, we were safely back on solid ground. But now, even getting out of the U-2 would be difficult. We taxi in, and it takes two teams to disconnect us from the plane. Finally, we were home. Thank you. Good Did job. I do okay? Saved my life in the emergency. Yes. <laughs> Welcome back. Nice to well, the airplane didn't want to cooperate with us. That's right, but when it didn't cooperate, uh, everybody remains easy. calm. 